I'm going to show you how to find and use the discriminant of a quadratic equation. Now, if you think back to the quadratic formula and you look at the square root symbol, inside the square root symbol is written b squared minus 4ac. That value is called the discriminant of a quadratic equation. And it tells us about the roots, i.e. the solutions, of the, that quadratic. So up here, I've written that the discriminant of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero is b squared minus 4ac. So this is the discriminant that I was just talking about. And here is just to remind you that the quadratic equation has to be rearranged to equal zero before you can use your values a, b, and c here in this expression, just like when you use the quadratic formula. So let's take a look at what would happen if you get a positive value for the discriminant. So pretend that you work this out, b squared minus 4ac, and you get positive 10, or 7.5. When it's positive, or for example greater than 0, it means there are two distinct real roots. Now if you think about a graph and the shape of a quadratic equation, it's a parabola and it's like this, or like this. If there are two distinct real roots, it just means that the equation intersects the x-axis in two different places, like in those two sketches there. Okay, so there would be two different solutions. If when you calculate the discriminant, it equals zero, it means there are two equal real roots. That just means there would be one solution and the parabola would just touch the x-axis in one place, like in these two sketches here, okay? Finally, if when you work out the discriminant, it's a negative number, i.e. less than zero, it means there are no real roots, okay? So there are no real solutions. And so if you think about what the sketch would look like, this time the parabola wouldn't intersect the x-axis, okay? So that's what it would look like in the different sketches over there. So let's have a look at some questions. In number one, it says find the discriminant of 3x squared plus 10x equals 2. So the first thing we need to do is rearrange the equation so that it equals 0. So I'm going to move the number 2 over to the left-hand side, so it's going to change to a negative, so that I have 3x squared plus 10x minus 2 equals 0. Now I can identify my three values, a, b, and c. Remember, a is always the coefficient of x squared. So here, the coefficient of x squared is positive 3, so I'm going to write a is equal to 3. b is always the coefficient of x, so here it would be positive 10, so b is 10. And finally, the constant, the part without the x, is c, okay? So in this example, it would be c is negative 2. Next, to work out the discriminant, we have to do b squared minus 4ac. So all I'm going to do is replace a, b, and c with those three values down here. So instead of b squared, I'm going to have 10 squared. Then I've got negative 4 here. And I have to multiply it with a and then by c. So a is 3 and c is negative 2. So now let's work out what that comes to. Well, 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100. And negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. But if I multiply negative 12 and negative 2, I get positive 24. And if I add those together, I get 124. So that is the discriminant. Now let's just talk about what that actually means, okay? This is a positive number. It's greater than 0. So it means there would be two distinct real roots. So you would expect this quadratic to have two distinct real solutions. So on a sketch, it would look something like this one here, okay? Now let's have a look at question two. It says find the values of k for which 4x squared plus kx plus one equals zero has two equal roots. So in our quadratic, we have to work out what this value of k is, okay? And it tells us there are two equal roots, which means the discriminant has to equal zero. 
So let's work out the discriminant here in terms of k and then we're going to put it equal to zero because it tells us there are two equal roots. So first I'm just going to identify my values a, b and c again like in question one. So a is positive four, b is positive k and c is positive one. Now the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac and so instead of b squared I'm going to write k squared then I'm mi uh, minus in 4 and I'm multiplying by a and then by c so by 4 and then by 1 okay so now let's just simplify this k squared is just going to stay as it is for the moment and negative 4 times 4 times 1 is negative 16 now remember this is the discriminant and we have to put it equal to zero because there are two equal roots and whenever that's the case we know the discriminant has to equal zero. So this is our equation and from here we can solve it to work out values of k. So if I'm solving this equation I'm just going to add 16 to the other side so that k squared equals 16. Then the opposite of squaring is to square root so k is equal to the square root of 16. And remember, whenever you square root, you get two values, one positive, one negative. So k is equal to oops, positive or negative 4. So they are the values of k. In question 3, it says find the values of k for which x squared plus 8x plus 3 equals k has two distinct roots. So it says there are two distinct roots. So when there are two distinct real roots, we can expect the discriminant to be greater than zero, okay? It's going to be positive. So let's try and work out the discriminant of this quadratic equation, and then we can form an inequality and put it greater than zero, and hopefully from there we can find the values of k. So the first thing you need to do is make sure the equation is rearranged to equal zero. So you need to move that value of k here over to the left hand side of the equal sign. So it's going to change to a negative k. So that leaves us with x squared plus 8x plus 3 minus k equals zero. Ne next let's um, identify our values of a, b and c. So a is going to be 1 here because there's 1 x squared. B is going to be positive 8, and C is going to be all of this, 3 minus K. Remember, C is the constant, everything that's not being multiplied with X, okay? So here is all of this part here. If we're going to work out the discriminant, B squared minus 4AC, we need to substitute those values A, B, and C into this expression. So instead of B squared, we're going to have 8 squared. Then we have minus 4, and we're multiplying with a, which is 1, and then with c, which is 3 minus k. So I'm leaving this in brackets because I'm multiplying all of this together here, okay? I'm just going to simplify this now. So 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. Then negative 4 times 1 is just negative 4, and if I times that by 3, I get negative 12. And then I'm multiplying negative 4 with negative k, which gives me positive 4k. And I can just simplify again. If I subtract these numbers here, I get 52. So this is the discriminant, 52 plus 4k. Now remember, we said there are two distinct roots. And when that's the case, the discriminant is positive, so it's greater than zero. So we're trying to solve this inequality to work out the value of k. So I'm going to subtract 52 on both sides, so that 4k is greater than negative 52. Next, I need to divide by 4, so k is greater than negative 13. So that's it, we've worked out the values of k k must be greater than negative 13. In question 4 it says find the values of k for which 2x squared plus 8x minus 5 equals kx squared has no real roots. So this time because it says there are no real roots we can expect the discriminant of this quadratic equation 
to be negative, okay? The discriminant is going to be less than zero. So again, we're going to calculate the discriminant of this quadratic equation, and this time we're going to form an inequality that says less than zero. So let's just rearrange the equation so that it equals zero. So I'm going to move kx squared over to the left-hand side so it's going to become negative. So 2x squared plus 8x minus 5 minus kx squared equals zero. Now I'm just going to group the x squared terms together as it's easier to work out the value of a that way, okay? So I'm just going to move negative uh, kx squared next to the 2x squared. And what you have to do to work out the value of a is factor out the x squared, okay? We're going to factorize because x squared is a common term here. So if I rewrite that in its factorized form, it would look like this, okay? And everything else stays the same in the equation. Once you've written it like that, it's easier to find the values of a, b, and c. Remember, a is the coefficient of x squared. So whatever you're multiplying x squared by is a. So all of this inside the brackets is equal to a. And b is equal to positive 8, and c is equal to negative 5. Now, remember, we have to work out the discriminant next, okay, in terms of k. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So if we look at the value of b here, it's 8. So instead of b squared, we've got a squared. Then we have negative 4 multiplied by a, which is 2 minus k and I will leave that in brackets, and then we're multiplying all of that by c, and c is negative five. Okay, so let's just tidy this up a little bit. Eight squared is eight times eight, which is 64. Next, we're multiplying negative four by two, which is negative eight, and if you multiply negative eight with negative five, you get positive 40. Next, if you multiply negative 4 with negative k, you get positive 4k. And if you multiply positive 4k with negative 5, you get negative 20k. And next, I'm just going to add those numbers here together. So 64 plus 40 is 104. So this is the discriminant of the equation, 104 minus 20k. And remember, because there are no real solutions, we know this discriminant must be negative. So it's going to be smaller than zero. So this is the inequality that we need to solve. So to solve this inequality, I'm going to subtract 104, so that minus 20k is smaller than negative 104. Now remember, when you're solving inequalities, if you ever find yourself multiplying or dividing by a negative number, the symbol switches around the other way. So if we divide both sides here by negative 20, this is a negative number, so you have to remember to switch the inequality sign. Okay, so let's just simplify this. Okay, so k is greater than, now a negative divided by a negative is always a positive, and then if you divide 104 by 20, you should get 5.2. Okay, so that's the answer. The values of k are here. k must always be greater than 5.2.